of all ages, welcome to the High Performance Call. It's good seeing some of you I haven't seen in a little while. Those of you that are, you know, the veterans, you're here all the time. Always appreciate you being on. For those of you that are new or newer, good morning and welcome to you. Um, the purpose of these calls, the High Performance Calls, every day, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern time, I come at you live. We do this as Zoom. We've got our community here. We're here to grow and learn together. Typically, we go over different things from mindset, training, goals, um, all sorts of different stuff. And then occasionally, I get into the the who's and how's and what's it's of uh, marketing online and, and some of the pieces. Typically, it's more higher level to help understand some of the basics. I'll give you normally a couple of things that you can directly apply. As we go through, guys, almost always there's some homework or some kind of activity that I give you. There's a reason that I do. And I promise if you take these, if you come in and you participate and whether that is asking questions, dropping comments in, answering questions when I ask, you will get more out of it. Don't be afraid or, or scared of asking a question. There's never really a, a, a poor question. Our goal, all of us, our goals are aligned with learning and growth. And the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. If you take the time to do the homework, you will grow as an individual, you'll grow as an entrepreneur. And hopefully as you apply that, um, you'll grow your business and revenue and everything else that goes along with it. So on that note, again, welcome. We're going to go ahead and dive in. So today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about LinkedIn. Why don't we start with what you guys know? How many of you guys have a LinkedIn profile already? Maybe not for this business, but you have a LinkedIn profile. Used Some of to. you do? Okay. And, and we got a few no's. All right. So as we dive in, um, what's kind of the, the common, what do you think about LinkedIn? Um, what, do you, what have you used it for? Right, set up but no content. Yes, I use it regularly. Good. Anybody else? Anybody else has thoughts on LinkedIn? So I have my LinkedIn set up and right. I did it just mainly for professional. Um, where I'm finding though is I'm not quite sure how I need to transition to my audience since I used it professionally in financial services. That's who a lot of my connections are. Yeah. Now I need to be able to uh, open my audience up and I'm not sure how to do that. Yeah. So we've got, you know, LinkedIn is a lot like other platforms. Well, it's a lot like Facebook in that you can have your, your personal and you can create a company profile. Right. So you can run it both ways. Um, there's a number of it's getting a bit personal. The DMs are strange, you know, and that's so a quick comment to all of you, you ladies. I apologize for the rest of us, for the men, because or at least for I don't want to say the rest of us because I don't use LinkedIn as a dating opportunity. But some guys are idiots, they're assholes. I'm sorry that you have to put up with it. Let me just say that. It is what it is. It sucks. I'm sorry. You can block them and report them and push them off. And, and I'm sorry for what it is. I'll just say that. And I'm, unfortunately, we're going to have to move on. Um, so, yeah, really, people do. And that's, that's the proper response for most of us that think like intelligent human beings. Is that really people are actually doing that? Yes, unfortunately they are because people are just, yeah, they've got issues. So I'm sorry, but on that note, you can still use it for business, right? That Because that's exactly what it's for. So <clears throat> we're talking about LinkedIn today. It's something that depending on your niche, it can be more beneficial than some other niches. With that said, you, I am always 100% in favor of creating content and continuity through all platforms, right? In one way or another, even if you're not planning on using Facebook or LinkedIn as a primary source, you should, um, yeah, Aga, folks can be worried. You should use LinkedIn and, and at least say what you're doing, right? Even if it doesn't fit 100% with your current, you know, profession, have a link in there, have something else, you know, in your headlines. There's, there's things that you can do. Uh, so what is the LinkedIn reach? So we're going to go through some of that. All right. Let me pull up a few slides and we'll kind of dive over. I'm going to show you a couple of things. Okay. So 
Here's the thing about B2B marketing. There is now about 600 million on LinkedIn. The great thing about that is, you know, because a lot of you guys are thinking uh, about it in the companies and personal profiles, a very small percentage of that is actually in the US, which is great because it gives you extra ways of generating, you know, an international reach, whether you're, you know, you're looking at US and Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, other countries where English is, is spoken more regularly it becomes obviously easier if you're, um, you know, speaking English with everything. But there is a higher percentage. A lot of people use LinkedIn. And when you're doing B2B marketing, which is what we're doing. Okay. Now, higher amount of people on Facebook, easier to market in certain ways. But LinkedIn is a platform that both organically and through paid ads, you can generate leads. Okay. So, Here's a couple of things that you've got to remember about it. Your funnel is always working, right? It's always working. People look before the, they buy. So it, how many of you guys are in sales and you've heard the saying that customers will typically purchase after five to 12 touches? It takes five to 12 impressions, right? How many of you guys have heard that? See yes. It somewhere. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Now, that's what it used to be. They say that now that number is closer to 13 to 30 because of the amount of ads and, and the way that we are bombarded by marketing now. So it, it takes longer to get conversions. That's why we talk about it's not just the first time, you know, if you get someone to respond the very first time that you put out now, that's great. But there's a reason we talk about consistent content. When we're looking to build a long-term business, there's importance in, in maintaining what we're doing. So um, this is what they're talking about here. 10% or 10 pieces of the content. I'm going to give you guys these slides afterwards. So 10 pieces of content are consumed before a purchasing decision is made. Right? 70 million slide shares. So that's one of the ways on LinkedIn. 94% of B2B marketers use LinkedIn. 57% of those who visit LinkedIn do so on the mobile device. How many of you guys have LinkedIn on your phone? If you don't I do. It, get it and, and that hour to three hours a day that you're spending on your marketing, start spending five to 15 minutes on LinkedIn. Get yourself comfortable with it first. Um, yeah, Denise, people do have a higher ad tolerance because they see it so often. Absolutely. So you should have it on your phone. You should have LinkedIn. You should have Facebook. You should have Instagram on your phone as tools, right? We're not just using it to scroll around and goof off. We're using them as tools, right? If you're in B2B, depending on what your niche is, if your niche is on this platform, you should be there, okay? There's no reason not to be. Yes, it is something a little bit more to learn. Yes, you should probably get, you know, focus most of your efforts on say Facebook, but don't totally neglect LinkedIn because there's money to be made here okay here's a couple of quick things four keys this is not my graphic i pulled it but you know we're going to go through some of these elements here okay so number one you find your audience geography function industry seniority that's part of what we talk about all the time understand your audience right i got to understand my niche i got to understand my audience shaping the perception means what type of ads updates posts etc am i putting out I doing that helps establish trust. So what have I said over and over and over again? People are going to buy from who they, there's three things that they look for. What do you guys, do you guys remember? Does anybody remember? Do me proud. Somebody people buy from who they trust. like, like trust. Trust. trust, trust and like, and no, there you go. Michelle. Awesome. No like and trust. David. Awesome. Good job guys. It means it makes me proud. I shed a tear. Good. Somebody's paying attention. Good. And then you can start to build strong community. So a couple of key things there. Next, just as, as an overall, guys, at its core, looking at LinkedIn, it's a professional social network. Shouldn't be used for dating. If you're stepping into it, don't, don't ever use it for dating. Use it as a tool for your business. Um, it, it's great for career development. If you guys are in a position where you need you know, you're looking for a new job while you're building this business. There's nothing wrong with just updating your LinkedIn profile and making it just slamming. I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that, right? Not just building your brand, but make yourself look better. Um, the professional connections, industry discussions, 
great way for you guys to find out more about your niche is on LinkedIn. Okay. You can find customers, you can find employees, you can find work, all sorts of different stuff you can do there. Okay. All right. Here's some key points. Okay. LinkedIn. It's a place you can keep in touch. People change jobs all the time. Sometimes they don't post it on Facebook right away, but more often than not, they do update their LinkedIn, hopefully. Um, Aga, um, we can talk. I'm not offering to do it myself, but I can put you in touch with someone. But a lot of the stuff that you guys use for your Facebook with small tweaks, you can use for LinkedIn, right? Yeah, there are so many groups, absolutely. So keep in touch. You can get helped. There's a lot of different places there. It's a great place to generate leads, okay? Um, here we go. So you create a personal profile. Guys, it's not just a resume. You have your headline and summary. In the headline, you want to describe what you're doing. Don't, here's the thing. You guys are marketers now, right? So let me ask you. So often people will set up their LinkedIn profile. And if you look at it, it reads like a resume, right? You look at it and, and it, there's the job description and the, it's like, it's tech speak. Ag exactly, right, Randy, and it's boring, right? Unless you're looking to hire someone like that, it's like, I, it doesn't matter, right? Now, you're stepping into a role of a marketer in a certain niche. So am I talking about how great I am? Or am I talking about, if you guys remember from the branding direct response marketing, if you guys have, haven't seen that recording, it's from November, go back and watch it. I'm gonna end up doing it again, but we're talking about our USP, our unique selling position or our MDP is what I talk about, my market dominating position. So I'm looking at my audience and I'm trying to explain what they have, but they don't want what they want, but they don't have, right? Boom, here it is. I understand what you've got going on and I know you don't wanna deal with that, I know what you're looking for and I can help you achieve it, right? That's the purpose. And, and you want to do that in a way that's conversational. LinkedIn is a great place because, you know, Instagram, you've got this little bio, you can put a couple of bullet points. Facebook, you've got a bio, but you can put in a link or two, but it's not really a place to do much else. Within LinkedIn, you can write almost a short form or long form ad essentially within your headline, right? So you're trying to do that to connect with the audience. You're trying to do something to help you stand out. Now, today I am gonna show you mine. I will tell you, I, I don't have it as optimized as I normally do, because I'm in the process of rebranding a couple of things. I'm finalizing some content that I'm gonna relaunch and I'm getting a new um, partner program funnel up and running in the next week or two. So I it's not, I've, I've pulled out like my main picture isn't, as great as it normally is, I pulled some stuff out. So I apologize, it's not gonna look as good, but I'll show you a couple of things and, and um, show you a little bit there. Um, it can be a, a career placement center, but we wanna turn it into something else. So um, with it, you can focus on workplaces, you add relevant skills, right? You can get friends and colleagues to endorse you. You can, Change, I don't know, do you guys notice you can change your public profile URL? So you can create a URL that's got your name. So it's easier to find than just the standard linkedin.com backslash, blah, you know, string of random numbers. You can create a custom URL, okay? Now, the relevant skills, call it, you know, endorsements and things like that. Here's what we can do. And I'm gonna kind of throw out this challenge. You guys kind of let me know. I'm gonna give you guys these slides. And so I want you to kind of think about it and why I want you to pay attention. I'm gonna give you these slides. I'm gonna give you the recording. I'd recommend setting up, even if you're not done, at least start to set up your LinkedIn over this weekend. If you've got one, maybe tweak a couple of things. Think about what can you do. Um, you could, if you have two different, you have a different email, you could set one up, Snow. But you also have a personal and you can set up a company page. Andrew, I, question for you. Yeah. Can one person have two LinkedIn profile? 
if you've got a different email, you can set something else up. A different email. They don't, it, it's, it's kind of like Facebook. They don't want you to, they don't, but if you're setting it up as a business, you can, right? Again, yeah. Paul, like your niche, I wouldn't stick with it. Stick with the one you got. Most of you guys, you know, a lot of times here's something. This is always personal for you guys. You make the decision. But so often I get this feedback from you guys that you want to separate things. Why? No. Really? Why? Well, I've got a personal one. I don't want people to see that. Mm. It doesn't matter. This isn't, if this was 10 years ago, I'd understand more. Things are so different now as far as people starting online businesses, building something else, offering a little bit more, doing some, yeah, you, you are your brand. We're building out that brand. You're building your credibility. If you've got a LinkedIn profile and you can show X number of, of contacts and, and endorsements and everything else, why would I not say, oh, and by the way, you know, I've, I've added this on. Here's what I do. You can have more than, you know, here's my current position. I'm also CEO of this company, right? Like that's the world that we're in now, guys, this isn't 10 years ago where we're talking about an online business was taboo. Oh my gosh, you're doing what? That internet thing is never going to work, right? The this size of the population over the last year that have had to do Zoom calls like this with their company, that have had, you know, that have been introduced to things like Etsy, and, you know, businesses on Pinterest and social media influencers that are actually making money, right? And things being sold online, this world of online education. Look, that's what all of the population of most major countries around the world last year did was online education. It's just a slightly different form of it. Don't be embarrassed by the fact that you're digital entrepreneurs. Own it. I mean, you're not coming out, walking out and saying, look, uh, check out my Learjet. Look at my Ferrari. As long as you're not being an idiot when you're doing your marketing, then there's no problem with it. Really, my point of view. Now, if you want to argue that with me, uh, we can talk one-on-one. -on -one, but it, it's, yeah, Anthony, I'm, having more than one company isn't a big thing. Like, I work with multiple brands. I've got my brands. I work with multiple other brands. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not like because I, I work here, I can't do anything else. Do you think, you know, I mean, look at it, guys. Think about it. Are any of your companies so in tuned with you that they wouldn't hire somebody else to help work in your category if they could produce more results? You're replaceable, yeah. Be, be, you know, we're all replaceable in that regard. Build yourself. Um, people will look at your personally, even if you separate it. Absolutely. They'll look you up. And so what? I want them to. I want them to find me everywhere. Right. You know how many people I've had come like through the partner program? Hey, I found you on LinkedIn. OK, good. So you see, I actually do what I'm talking about. Oh, you mean I've talked about restoration and you can see that I actually did restoration. OK. And you're honest question. with it. Yeah. So I've been think, trying to mull this over and I, you know, I'm new to Facebook. I'm new to social media. So I'm trying to figure out. I have a lot of people that are friends of friends that are, that know me through my family and friends. And I don't necessarily want to get caught up in keeping track of everybody, but so should I, should you I don't be have to, you don't have to keep track of anybody. Social media should be a tool and a platform for you to run your business. Yeah. So should I, should I accept everyone that I kind of know is a friend of a friend? I, it's up to you. Some people are shaking their heads no, some are shaking their heads yes. I accept everybody and anybody, every single person, because a contact could lead to a sale or a connection. That's what I was wondering. Because, I, you know, for some of you guys that are, are, if you want a super private profile that is only for friends and family, you create a WhatsApp group, create a text group, create a Google Hangout, or create a small private Facebook page that only your friends have and keep your other one. Because this idea that we're, we're able to live in a private world, you, you cannot be in a private world and be a digital marketer. It doesn't exist. And that, that leads me to my second question. Um, yesterday, I had a Facebook prompt asking how, how secure I wanted to make my Facebook page. And 
I, I mean, I'm so new. I don't know. I, I just put almost everything to only me to see, but I'm well, like, yeah. So then no one's going to see your post. No one's going to see your friends. No one's going to see anything. And you're not going to be able to connect with anybody. So just just it, do it public. Yeah. Like, yeah. Agus saying she has more uh, private contact with friends and in Instagram messaging or text, right? Like I, social media is a, as a business platform for me. Yeah. I, I don't look at it as the same thing as like a chamber of commerce meeting. That's why I'm doing it there. Now you, you do need to show that you're a human. So it's not all business. And we've talked about that at a bunch of different times, but just because I have a personal profile doesn't mean like you won't see my kids on there ever. I'm not posting them. Some people will, some won't, but I mean, you can still post life without getting too personal. You can still connect without getting super in depth, right? Stop. My point of all of this is stop worrying about whether other people can see you because they can't. Okay. That was my, that kind of answers. I wanted to, it made sense to have everything public because I'm running. And, And yeah. And part of this guys, you'll have your business. And you'll have your personal and Facebook's a little bit different than LinkedIn. You know, you can, you know, LinkedIn won't necessarily let you see everybody. You see who you connect with, right? So like my personal page, I may not be like, if I went and I found, um, let's see, I don't know who's got a LinkedIn profile. I can look up Randy and I'm going to look up yours. We're going to do this. You can look up. I do, and I'm about to. I'm about to change mine here. I'm working while you're talking, and I'm making my uh, cover. So right now, I have no cover photo or banner. Okay. Is this hey, you, Randy? Andrew, ever curious? Andrew, can I make a comment regarding no. that? Her last yeah, comment. Go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> I know I've been quiet a long time. You have okay? been for a while. What's up there? <laughs> Um, the one thing that I would say, and I can't remember her name that was just speaking, but, um, as a woman and you just want to check the people who are sending you messages in terms of, have they done anything besides that one picture that they have up on? Because I'm getting a crap load of every single kind of person and their, and their, they have basically that one picture on their Facebook and that's yeah. it. And yeah, yeah. they're, they're scamming. They're looking yeah. and yeah. what they do is what they do is they attach to you as a friend and then they attach to everybody else, you know, as a friend. Yeah. So that's you can, the issue. You can absolutely block and, and unfriend. Absolutely. Um, I'm kind of, thank you. You know, You're there, there's, I mean, there's different, different levels to all this. Anyway, um, Randine, was that you? That profile I had up? Is this you? I can't tell me yes or no. Okay. What'd you say? You yeah, go. it is. That's yeah. mine. Yeah. Okay. I have to change so, more, but yes. I keep okay. working. So, and I'm not I'm not doing this to, to pick, but what I just wanted to show you guys, I I can't connect with her right away because she's a third level. Which she mean, yeah. which means she's connected to someone that I'm connected to, two layers out, right? So I can because I have the LinkedIn Pro. I pay monthly for my LinkedIn. I can message her, but I'm not connected, so I you can't just straight connect, right? There's different levels of LinkedIn that does almost insulate you, so you can't get spammed by people that don't have some kind of connection unless you're connecting on a regular basis. Now I pay for the premium so I can message her. I can send her in mail and she'll get it simply because I'm paying for that. Right. You know, LinkedIn will let you do that. Um, I'm going to show you guys some ideas on, on content. Okay. And and anybody that wants me to connect, like you can find me, I'm going to show you mine in a second. Andrew. Yeah. Search mine. I want you to check it and tell me if I need to add. I will. Or I will. We'll do. I, I think this next week, Monday, I'll probably do some evaluations on some people because there's a couple of things that I want to challenge you guys to do. So first thing you want to do with your. Um, so here's some things you can do now. First thing to do. These are like this is the picture that I've got. I think that's a picture that I've got. Right. Yeah, that's a picture that I've got up. This is not normally my picture that I have here. OK, I know this is crap. I will change it by Monday, okay? Not normally the one that I've got. But you can have a couple of different things 
in, in what you put here, right? It doesn't just have to be financial advisor. Like I've got a couple of different things in what I do, right? Um, this is this other picture. This is a, a partner of mine, a good friend uh, named Brock. You know, the point of these is don't put a selfie from your car or a poorly lit cell, you know, Snapchat with filter. Don't do that. Okay. Have a good picture. Randine, that was a, you know, has a good, like, that's a professional picture. If it wasn't professional, it looks professional, right? Have something that looks real. That's a good part of it, right? The, this would be a good example of a banner. If I wanted to say, hey, look, here's something that I do. Now I took off mine. I'll put up the one that I had. Um, maybe I'll try and do it end of this call. So you guys, if you go look, you'll see it. But you know, find a profile that kind of shows, hey, this is what I do, right? You're building credibility the same way you would on your Facebook profile. The image that you guys are getting for your Facebook that we talk about within the funnel with some small tweaks will fit the parameters for LinkedIn, okay? And it absolutely will work. So what kind of posts do I post? What kind of stuff do I put up? I don't need. Simple, simple example, right? You can do hashtags inside. You, he's got a link in here. And he's got questions. Why does that work? So when I'm posting content, first thing I want is hook. I want to use copies. I want hooks, a headline, something that grabs them. I want to ask questions right now. The hook is also targeted to my audience. Are you a dentist looking to generate, you know, bring in more patients? And then you can ask some questions because if, if Paul and, you know, Nancy and Diane, if you guys answer the questions on my in my post, people that you have followed or that are connected to you will see your comment, right? It's a great way. Organic reach on LinkedIn is much bigger right now than organic reach on Facebook. So it's a great way to do it. Um, you want to test length. What that means is LinkedIn is longer than what Twitter would be, longer than just a couple of sentences, right? But shorter than, say, a, a full blog post. It's a great place to test, like, is this kind of post better? Is this post getting a better response? Test both of them, right? Staying native. Does anybody know what that means when I say stay native? LinkedIn wants you to spend as much time as possible on their, yep, no outside links. They want you to stay on their platform. You can write a blog and post it to a LinkedIn article, so it's, it keeps people on LinkedIn, and you can start to build up an audience that way. You can write and you've got it right there on LinkedIn. Okay. They want you to so, stay. They want their audience to stay on LinkedIn as long as possible. Andrew, I have a question for you. Yeah. So there's a, there's a programs out there like to do send your message and do the marketing through like um, uh, Connect 360 or U, Ulink and a bunch of others like predictive prospectors and all that. Yeah. So if you send the message through that, and all those platform owners or people who say, we recommend you to do this way is a better. And they said, hey, don't go on LinkedIn and apply back to people. You should apply back to uh, Connection 3, Connect 365 or Ulink and things like that. So how would you stay on the LinkedIn platform then if you're replying back to from the different third-party platform? Um, is the third party, because each third-party platform is a little bit different, right? Yeah. So like I've got one that I've used where it was an auto connector and, and an auto message, essentially a bot, right? There's a lot, I'm not getting heavy into that training. Uh, there are a number of different ones out there. I'm probably at some point going to introduce you guys to one or two of those that I use. I've got one that's been helping me with my LinkedIn marketing. We'll talk about it later. It's not necessary for everyone. And I'm not trying to pitch you on my buddy's company. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's helpful because I don't want to do it. So it depends on the platform that you're using for messaging. If you can respond there and you know exactly who it is. And for me, if I can log into my LinkedIn and I can pull up their profile still and see the messages that we've got, great. Yeah. Um, the goal always through your messaging and your connections is to connect, build up you know, a, a connection with them, know like, where they know, like, and trust you and either lead them to your link or if you're going to do some consulting or something else, lead them to a phone call, right? 
the point is to take it off of LinkedIn at some point where they take some kind of action. The same thing it is on Facebook. I'm trying to connect with them, but I want to take them off either to, you know, my link so that they buy something and I can start to build a professional relationship like that. Or I take them to a phone call. If, if you guys, cause some of you guys I know are doing consulting and coaching, or you want to do more. So that would be leading to a phone call. I would still take them to a link with a BSL, a video sales letter. Everybody remember that when I say BSL, take them to a BSL, introduce them there and then do a phone call because I don't want to do a phone call with everybody fresh off. Like the, the, don't be the person that's, you're going to get people to ask you to, Oh, let's meet over. A, oh, dude, let's do a virtual coffee. Ha ha ha. No, I don't have time for that. Here's, here's what I've got. Here's a VSL explains who I am, what I am, what I do, how I can help you, what I'd like to do, et cetera, et cetera. If you still want to talk after that, here's how to do X, Y, Z. Great. Now, now I'll talk with you. I'm big on, you guys know, I've talked about it over and over and over again. I'm big on relationships and building partnerships. And sometimes those partnerships don't necessarily fit with what you think they would be like ideal for me, right? I've done trainings on power teams and joint ventures. I can uh, VSL, George, V is in video. VSL is video sales letter, a short video. Um, but I'm big on building those relationships because I know some of those relationships are what's generated a lot of referrals and a lot of revenue for me. So I'm open to conversations if they like, I'll look at your stuff. And if I really want to talk to you, I'm going to talk to you. If you really want to talk to me, I'm going to put you through a step or two. So it's not just a straight sales pitch nonsense. Like I don't have time to just get on a phone and have you pitch me. That's not what I'm in the no. mood for. No. If I want to buy something, I'm going to go find it. Then a lot of your customers are doing the same thing. So I, I don't immediately, you know, cut them off, but I say, okay, so here's what we go. Right. Okay. Thank you. So a couple of quick things. You can leverage groups. Groups on LinkedIn are fantastic. Um, let me show you. I think I, uh, let me go to. All right. So here's what, what we're going to do. I'm going to look up. Dentist was the one I was starting to look up earlier. I'm just going to show you guys. Dentists in groups. So if dentist is your niche for example you can go to you can look up look that up and then look up groups there's 988 results for groups with dentists in the name right now that one may be german i don't know but you know i can get in and, and start looking around and, and you get an idea of what's going on with your niche you get an idea of what's happening in the world of marketing and networking for dentists right there you go you can see what some of your competition's doing. Mimic some of that. Mimic some of that content. Right? Does that make sense? Every able to do this? Look, building out your own basic profile is pretty simple, it, at least just the basic one. And you can juice it up and, and start adding in, you know, create, change your headline. Um, your about can be longer. It doesn't just have to be, you know, let me give you, like, this is this is a sales letter, guys. You know, and then I've got some specialties, but this isn't just a resume. I'm like, here's what we do, right? I find any small or medium-sized business, ten to $50,000 in additional revenue in less than 45 minutes. I got a strategy session that I run them through. Um, anyway, you know, there's all this different stuff in here. It doesn't not just have to be, something's going on with LinkedIn, the pictures aren't popping up, but you can put in here, you know, it doesn't just have to be a straight resume. It should be a little bit more like a landing page, like we always talk about. So leverage groups, great way to do that. Start conversations. You can even start your own. Uh, running an ad. Um, you can choose the objective, awareness, consideration, conversion. I want to say it's this one. All right. So easy way to kind of, when you get set up, you'll have a campaign manager. You can run ads. You can create an audience location. You can exclude different things, different locations. I can look at the audience attributes, job title, industry skills you can target. So people that have a certain skill, you can choose the ad format or you can choose all of them. Placement, partner apps and websites. So they'll post some of this where it's not even just on LinkedIn. Oh, I got some chats in here that I'm missing. Andrew, quick question. Yeah. How do you get in this this section? 
um, to post from right there. Advertise. Oh, advertise. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, real quick, before you go further on that, um, does it, because I'm looking and it's saying premium that I should be signing up for a premium version of LinkedIn. I would start, start with the basic. So the free, yeah. we can do everything. Free, you can do just about everything. You can't do as much in mail. Um, you can't connect on like that third layer out, so, but start there. Right? You don't have to pay for it yet. Start there, get yourself fully set up, start creating some connections, start getting some content. And then when, when you go, depending on your niche and, you know, send me some info there that we could talk about, but you probably don't need it yet. Start the process, get used to it before I start paying for it, where I know I've got to leverage it. Right. Okay. Free, it's free available. Now you can't run an ad for free, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I was going to show you. So you set a budget, a campaign budget, how long you're going to do it. There's some it's, minimums involved, all that kind of stuff. But if it works for your audience, then great. Is the right? sales navigation part of it? Sales, nav sales navigator? There's different levels of membership with LinkedIn. And some yes. of it's like if you're going after sales people, if you're looking to hire, like there's different levels and different aspects. So you've got to figure out what's going to work best for you, right? So, so it, is it, it like depends. That's premium? why I keep saying it depends, guys, because some of your niches, it won't work. Some of them you don't need to. Others, you can just start building natively, organically, and start to build up enough of a following. And then, look, 50 bucks a month, you know, I generated a number of clients from there that generated, you know, six figures last year. Like, is it worth the 50 a month? Yeah. You know, is it fully 100% automated? That was one of the questions. Like, you know, there's nothing that is, unless you have somebody else creating your content for you, there's nothing that's 100% automated, right? Okay. It's automatic if I got, if I'm paying somebody else to do all my shit, then it's, then I don't have to touch it. If you don't want to pay someone else, then you've got to do it. Spend a couple of minutes a day because I can take one type of business, right? And I've talked about this with the target audience. If I understand, you know, what's kind of my perfect avatar, my perfect type of business, and then I can create, you know, I can say, okay, well, what other businesses look just like this? And you can create that on LinkedIn. You can go, I want businesses that have, you know, one to 10 employees. Like you can figure that out. And then I can target those types of businesses and get in front of them. And I can do the same topic. Once I've got a headline and an idea of what I'm going to do for, for content, I can do a quick written. I can do a, a picture. I can do a short video. If I don't want to be on video, then I can create an animated video on Fiverr. I mean, there's so many different things that you guys can do. And, and we don't need to make it complicated. Sometimes we're like, how do I come up with 30 different ideas? Like I can take 10 ideas and create 50 pieces of content because I'm just going to do different forms of it. Yeah, they have all sorts of analytics. Like they really, they're great with analytics. LinkedIn, it, it's different than it was a few years ago. They've really improved it. And the great thing is, is you're getting in front of the businesses. You can ident, you know, you can target by tight, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, title is the word I was looking for, but job title, you can target by that. Are they real strict like Facebook? You know, that Facebook wants to shut you down in a heartbeat if you do something wrong. Well, you're not, you're not targeting, you're not doing the same kind of stuff. Like, you know, just be smart about how you're doing it. A lot of times it's, you're just trying to create the engagement to get them to your page. And then you've got the links there, right? Sometimes it's that. Sometimes I'm just posting additional content to get in front of exactly who I want to get in front of. Um, you don't have to start until you've got, I mean, have the VSL there. You know, but the VSL is so that you don't waste time. The VSL and someone like directing someone to that, having that link there, because a lot of times you'll get a message and someone's like, let's get on a call. No, look, check this out first. And then here you go. And what I'll do is I'll have when I'm actively promoting. So like I've said, I've slowed it down. I'm getting ready to kick it back up again. Once I do, and it's probably going to be 30 to 60 days before I really push it again. Once I do, I'll show you guys. And I'll, I'll show you kind of how I'm doing some of it um, and what the VSL would look like. And you guys will be able to see it. You'll, I mean, connect with me and you'll be able to see it. Um, but you'll, 
you've got to be strategic about your time, right? Like when I get into, when I start, I'm going to be going after a very specific type of individual. So I don't waste my time on other stuff because it's very easy. You're going to be bombarded by salespeople, but part of your marketing and part of what you're doing is so that you don't come off like a car salesman. I need to talk, you know, are you interested in doing business with me? I really want to connect with you because you need to do business with me and you should really check it out because I crush it with everybody else. It's just like you, man, you should really check out my website and then give me a call because we need to do a virtual coffee. Don't be that guy. Don't. Okay. There's a way to do this where you, you don't come off like that. So, um, yeah, don't get too political, abusive, rude. Um, those are things that you just stay away from in an ad to begin with, Right. That's not what you're trying to do in an ad. So, but unless, you know, that and, or crazy claims, you know, those types of things can get you into trouble, but none of, none of our members are doing any of that nonsense. You guys are smart. You're paying attention before you run any ad. You also look at what to avoid on LinkedIn advertising, what to avoid on my Facebook advertising, what not to do. Too many people are just focused on, I just got to get out there. Okay. And then they get shut down. Get your stuff shut down in a week because you don't pay attention to basic stuff. Right. I mean, I told you guys, I did something stupid the other day. I wasn't paying attention. I promoted, I boosted an ad or a a post on Instagram just to show that boosting a post doesn't do any good. And I had said shit in the post and it got my ad account shut down just because I wasn't paying attention. Don't do that. Don't be stupid. Don't do, don't. (laughs) Do as I'm saying, not as I do, right? Um, okay, a couple of other key points here. So yeah, you can, the placement, budget, and schedule, conversion, tracking, how I want to convert it, all sorts of different stuff here, right? You know, this would show my 30-day ad spend if I'm forecasting, because I haven't really changed up my audience. But you can spend a lot, right? You can spend a lot or a little. You don't have to spend a lot. So here's are some things, awareness, content, consideration, conversion. One question. How much do they charge per impression? It's different with every niche. And it depends on when, when you're doing it, what you're doing, it, how long you're doing it. You give them a budget campaign over a certain amount of time. You can increase it. You can decrease it. You can shut it off anytime you want. So even if you're running, you know, if you start it for a week and they say, okay, well, if you're doing a week, you need a minimum of $100. I can shut it off in two days. I don't have to spend the $100. Right. I can shut it off. So here are some things that you can target with. This is a great thing. I can target by company name, schools, interests, all sorts of different stuff. So if I'm doing dentists, I'd look for different dental schools and I would target based on dental schools. Right. Job titles, seniority, all sorts of different stuff. Okay. Choose your LinkedIn (coughs) ad format. So sponsored content, message ads, dynamic ads, text ads, all sorts of different things. And you can mix those up. Again, I'm going to give you these. This, is, this isn't, hey, here's how you run an ad. This is a highlight of what it takes to run an ad. This isn't going to give you the exact steps, okay? I'm trying to give you guys a preview of what it looks like. You can have the cost per send, which is the message campaign, cost per click, or cost per in, in, impression. There's different ways that you can optimize for your budget, Okay. Measure and optimize the campaign. You can track all of it. So this was, um, I think David, you were asking, do they show? Yeah, you can track all this stuff, social interactions, and then you can create extra interaction. Like if I'm running an ad on a post, if I'm boosting that post in front of exactly who I need it to be in front of, and they start commenting, their friends or their connections are going to see it. They'll start commenting back and forth, back and forth. I'm creating more, you know, interaction that way that's organic guys the point of all of this is um gabe part of that would i don't know occasionally that's i mean that's happened to me on on facebook i haven't had that happen on linkedin typically if you can show that you shut it off what happens a lot of times though within a lot of these platforms is we think we turn it off but we don't save it we don't do something else and so it keeps going um, and then people like, well, I, I charge back on my credit card. Well, that'll get your account shut down too. You need to go back and forth and argue. You got to be careful. Um, so, but part of that is, is paying attention. So if I shut it off, guys, this is Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. If you run an ad 
and you shut it off, you better check later that night and the next morning to make sure it's off. Don't shut it off and come back a week later or you're going to be in pain. Okay? I'm saying that for everybody. If you run an ad and you turn it off, make sure you check later that night and the next day to make sure it's off. Because sometimes Facebook will be like, oh, man, that was some crazy glitch, huh? Sucks. You owe me $500. You go, whoa, wait, what? Yeah. So pay attention to that. Okay. And if you turn off and here's the other thing, right? Like pay attention to all this stuff. I was, I had a client that I was working with and, you know, in the addiction recovery niche that I found on LinkedIn and we got a monthly consulting plus X, Y, Z, and we helped build out a website and I was building funnels and we're doing all this. And then they said, Hey, we want to do some Facebook marketing. I said, great. Let me go in and evaluate it. My team, we can take a look, blah, blah, blah. How much are you looking to spend? Well, we haven't done anything in two years on Facebook. You know, we don't have a huge budget, but we'd like to be able to do these things. Awesome. And I go, well, you know, so I go in and I evaluate. I go, how many leads have you generated off of Facebook in the last two years? And they go, well, we haven't generated anything because we haven't run any ads. I said, you've been running $250 worth of ads for the last year and a half every month. What do you mean? Here it is. You've been running ads. You never shut them off. Well, we haven't gotten any leads from it. Okay. Well, then you spent, you know, four grand on nothing. You know, pay attention is my point. Because sometimes you think you you shut it off and it's not. <clears throat> That's when, you know, hour in the morning, hour or two at night, pay attention. You're going to spend a little bit of time looking at your ads and then you're going to spend some time creating content. That's all it takes, guys. But be cognizant of your business because you're running a business now. Congratulations. That's a huge step. You're all business owners at this point. Trade it like a business, right? I'm not going to put food in the oven and then, you know, I love Sierra to death, but she doesn't trust me if the food's in the oven. I don't trust her. Like you go back and check yourself, right? Because I want to eat the cookies I put in there. I don't want them burned to a crisp or vice versa, right? So anyway, look, LinkedIn is, is a fantastic platform. Here's the challenge for the weekend, guys. I'm going to get you these slides. I'm going to get you the recording. We'll send out an email. Here's the challenge. You guys get to decide how many of you would like to take part. Oh, uh, Gabe, we do, we do great. She's fantastic. Um, we communicate a lot. Who do you engage in dialogue and why? Are you talking about um, on LinkedIn? I engage with people that I want to, you know, I want to hire me or that I want to hire, right? I look for, I look for new mentors all the time. Some of you guys, some people are still scared to spend money on a mentor. Like I look for, like, I want to find someone that I can pay that's going to help me all the time. I'm looking for that because I know the return that I've gotten over the years. So um, here's the challenge for LinkedIn. If you've got one, you're going to modify some of your headline. You're going to start to write some of it out. Even if it doesn't look perfect, you're going to start to do that. If you've got some of the stuff that you've already used to, for your Facebook profile and some of those things, use it. Put your link over there. Start to build that up, right? If you don't have anything, post, you know, create a basic profile. Basic. Start something. For those that do, next week, I'll start, I don't know if I'll start a whole new Facebook group or, or a you know, Google Doc where everyone's got, everyone's going to put their link for their LinkedIn so we can connect. And, you know, you'll be able to recommend or, you know, endorse somebody for a skill or something like that. So we can help kind of organically grow each other. But here is, if you're really new to it, that's great. You're, here you've got some training I just went through. You're going to have some slides. And then there is YouTube and LinkedIn and a thousand different resources where you guys can pick up the basics. I'm not trying to turn you into mastered LinkedIn marketers right now. I'm trying to introduce you, you know, pull back the curtain, introduce you to a whole new world, right? And look at the possibilities that are there. And there's not a single one of you that should ever say, I don't know if I can do this. Just do it. Just do it. Right. So on Monday, what I'll probably do is give you guys a link for a Google Doc and you'll put your URL for your LinkedIn. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You guys can come here. Can you see this URL on here? 
So mine is just Andrew David one because there was someone else that had Andrew David, but you can change that URL so that it's you, it's personalized. And you should absolutely do that. It's pretty simple. It's right here, edit public profile and URL. You see that? Everybody see this right here? Pretty yeah. simple. <laughs> yes. Edit, edit public profile and URL. So on Monday, we're going to have a list. You can be able to put it up there. We're all going to connect. And if you've got nobody, all of a sudden you'll have 10, 15, 20, 30 connections. If you've got a few, maybe we can endorse some other people with skills and it starts to make you look a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. So, hey, yeah. Andrew, can I ask a quick yes. question? Yeah. Should we have, you know how your um, cover on um, that you were just showing us is just that picture? Do you? Do you, would you have a, you know, something of your business on that cover photo? Normally. Yeah, normally I do. Let me see if okay. I can find. So, but you don't, you don't do it like we did with Facebook. No advertising on that. Just, I would. just kind of. Yeah. Our... Hell yeah. Let me see if I can find the one that I normally use. Because I'm in the process of creating mine right now. And I have, I have my brand builder lead machine logo. And I have my iGenius um, financial services logo. And then right. I have my my overall branding, which is woman powered. And mm -hmm. I just kind of have those logos and no, but no, and a picture of me and no comment. No, you know, what are you doing or, you know what I'm saying? So I've got, I need to find mine so if you guys if you find me within when we're off the call within an hour or so i'll update my my banner so you can see what i've got up there um with that said i am updating it so it is going to look a little bit different here soon but i'll update it so you can see i don't think there's anything wrong with you know i mean you should it should be building your credibility absolutely i just need to find the one i had um if you Live several different. I know LinkedIn is out of date. Um, so here's the thing, guys. Um, <clears throat> do the basics. I may pick a couple of you to do a, a real, hey, let's look at this. I'm not going to do that for everybody. Okay, I can't because there's too many. And honestly, I only charge for it. So I will do it for a couple and I'm going to pick randomly. I'll put it on one of those, you know, there's some apps and websites where I can just put in a bunch of names and it'll pull it. So I'm going to do it that way. So you guys don't think I'm doing anything favoritism, right? We'll get the links on Monday. Okay. I'll, I'll create a Google doc so everyone can put it up there. All right. I will evaluate some. We'll, we'll help a couple people build. You guys be able to endorse other people and give them, you know, help each other out, but take some action this weekend. Some of you guys I know will take action. Some of you guys are going to come in on Monday and be like, I did it. I got it. Dara's sitting there doing it right now. Good. The more you do stuff like that with this business in general and on these calls, when I give you stuff like that, when I give you homework on, on your mindset, when we talk about time management, we talk about identifying certain things that we need to work on. If you do that, it will make a difference. I promise you it will. There's no reason not to, guys. Like you got a community here willing to support. You're getting free training that normally costs a little bit. I'll tell you, right? Like there's value here, guys. Take advantage of it. Be the best version of you. The power is in your hands. There's only so much we can lead you to water. You got to drink. On that note, love you guys much. Go out and be amazing. Have a fantastic weekend. Kick some butts. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Um, yeah, you don't have to have a business name. Build your own. Create your own and just talk about how awesome you are. On that note, guys, I'll see you soon. Thank Take you. Care, Thanks, everybody. Andrew. Thank you. Bye. Thank Welcome. you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Happy weekend.